All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Makak Wadash, the bananas to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson going into um the video that you're going to see me post up at the start of this, at the beginning of this video, right? Which is like a, um, it's a clip from a short film that somebody made about the Purge movie. Right, they made their own short film and it pretty much just showed some guys lurking in a car. Right, some guys lurking in a car ready to cause harm on people, man. And what I'm going to title this video is something along the lines of Are purge like events predicted in the Bible? And the short answer to that question is yes, man. All right, but what's going to cause these purge like events? All right, because by saying purge like events, I don't mean that it's going to become legal one day. One day a week, one day a year for 12 hours for people to be able to commit all crimes. Everything's just going to be legal, right? And then level 10 government ranking officials, as the movie says, level 10 government ranking officials are immune or exempt from having to be able to take per part in the purge or whatever. I mean, like, the type of mentality that people are in of evil, man, right? Is that going to is that gonna take place on the earth now? The answer is yes, like I said a minute ago, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read something. Let me read something. Right, I got my um my apocrypha here. Right, and I'm just gonna read this. <clears throat> this is second as chapter 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So people are gonna be gonna be killing each other, man. And as as I've heard this, I see some woman, right, walking by, shashaying her hips as she's walking, right? You everyone knows what I mean about how these women walk or whatever, right? She's walking by, swinging, swinging her hips and all of that, right? But in that day, women in like I, I know, you know what? That's mad, you know, because I was literally just hearing a brother teaching, going into the same thing, man, about how these women, they they like to get, bring attention to themselves now. <clears throat> but in the time that I'm about to read about, women are not going to want any attention, right? They're not going to want any attention being brought to themselves. They're going to wish that they was ugly, overweight and all of that. But even if they're even in that state, there's still going to be some sicko out there that's like, man, well, she's fine to me. She'll do for now. There's still going to be some sicko out there that's, that thinks that she looks all right. Because he might have not seen a woman, right? He might have not seen a woman for two months or he might not have seen a woman for a week. And then he stumbles upon seeing you and he's like, you know what, she'll do for now. Or he might have never been with a woman in his whole life because that's what this whole um, social media thing's produced. It's produced um, a thing called incels, man, which is men that don't get no women. Right, so there might be a guy that's in his mid thirties or in his early forties, and he's never had a woman, man. And what incel means is involuntarily celibate, right? So there's going to be men that are like that. That now they're going to have the freedom and the reign to be able to get away with doing whatever they want to do. And we're already seeing signs of this because the police are not because of the fuel prices. The police are not going to every single crime that gets committed, man. Let me carry on reading. Verse fifteen for the sword and the destruction draw of night. And one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands. And the woman that walked past, she looked good or whatever, right? She looked good from the back of her anyway, from what I saw. But in that day, she's gonna, she's not going to be proud like that, man. She's going to be hiding somewhere, like that brother said, man. He said that women are naturally a prey. They're like a rabbit, you know, which is true. And I did a video on this, on this same topic like yesterday night, right? Like, well, to get today... It would have been today, early, early, very early in the morning today, with the image of these five Israelite women with shotguns and like assault rifles and stuff like that. And I said that women trying to put on the like mighty warrior spirit is not going to work. And the reason why we know this is because there's a prophecy in the Bible, Isaiah chapter four, by where um it says that women are going to, seven women are going to take hold of one man. Let me carry on reading. Verse 15, for the for the for the sword and the destruction draw of night, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in the hands, or in a time like that, a lot of these women that 
are just walking by by trying to get attention because they're trying to grab some simp that might have a new have a GTI car, right? He might have he might have a good social life, and she wants to get access to him and his lifestyle just by him just by him having access to sleeping with her or whatever. They're not gonna the men are not gonna be in that mentality at that time because there's not gonna be as much resources available, right? So when there's a lack of resources, everything changes, man. The city life as it is right now that benefits women being in the cities, right, and being able to go to a nightclub with the women getting free and all of that. But in the time to come, this stuff, this spirit's gonna be taken away, man. And all the pride that women have now, where they might like you, a woman will be walking walking up towards a man, and there might be a tight space, and she'll just barge through and try and not go past and try and not let him pass or, or give way to him, or whatever. Or she'll be like doing road raids and sticking her middle finger up to him or whatever. All of that's gonna be thrown out the window, man. These women are gonna be hidden. They're not gonna be. They're not gonna be trying to be on no on no warrior spirit in that time, man. They're gonna go back to exactly what they are. And the brother also said another point, which I think is a beautiful point, right? He said that a lot of men that people think are tough guys now are not gonna be tough guys in that day, and that's very true, man. Because even in in this world right now, there's a lot of these street guys or whatever that think that they're so tough, right? With their want, with their silver tough or their gold tough hanging out their mouth, right? But they couldn't beat up some guy that day that's just training boxing and just humble walking down the street. They couldn't even beat him in a fight, really. They, that guy would be able to put them to put them in the earth if he really wanted to. But he's a humble guy and just mind his own business. Right? And then there's people that people know about that do boxing and all that do combat sports so that are meant to be some kind of tough guy. But fighting combat sports is different to a fight to the end. It's completely different. And all these combat sports athletes, they have a whole regimen and a whole sports scientist team. They have a sports psychologist. A lot of them have a sports psychologist, right? They have a coach and all of that. They have a they have an um, entourage to tell a man, you're going to whoop him, man. Man, nobody can beat you, right? That's what Floyd Mayweather used to hate. Floyd Mayweather used to have a whole entourage, right? Hard work, he'd be on the bag. Hard work. Then they'd shout dedication. He'd say hard work. They'd say dedication. He'd say all work is what? All work is what? And they'd be like, easy work, easy work, right? That's what he used to do, right? He had a whole entourage. But in the times to come, there's going to be a guy that don't have an entourage. There's going to be a guy that would normally feed off the crowd, an extrovert, that and coming up against a guy that might be an introvert. And he don't, the introvert guy don't need no crowd to be able to, to be able to spring into action in this fight. Now, to use another example, this is from an anime. I remember watching this anime called Baki, right? Baki Hanma. And it's like about a lot of guys that do an underground street tournament where they want to, where they fight and stuff like that to see who's the toughest man on the whole earth, right? And the one guy, the one guy that's like a crazy like criminal or whatever, some Russian guy, he comes up to a character that's like a current, the currently the world champion at boxing, and he meets him and he he comes to him in a in a restaurant or a hotel that he's eating at, right? And he steps in his steps in his zone and he's like. I'm, I'm here to fight you pretty much and then the boxer steps up and he says what what are you waiting for i told you i'm here to fight you what are you waiting for a bell to ring so then he says ding ding right the boxer tries to throw a punch at him he dodges underneath the punch hits him with his like two knuckles or something like that here with like these part of his hands open up his whole face or whatever and just leaves him on the floor after beating the hell out of him man right but that guy was the world champion. But the other guy was little known and was an underground doing underground stuff that nobody even knew that he could fight. And these are some of the examples that are going to be taking place on this earth, man. And that, that was a very um, in-depth, like what, what the brother was saying, man. How he was going into all the intricacies of what's going to be taking a place <clears throat> when Yahweh brings his wrath upon the earth. Now, let me carry on reading this. Second Earth chapter 15 and verse 16. For there, be sedition, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, that shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So there's going to be a lot of these PCSOs, or a lot of these P police officers, right, that are, are always mighty when it comes to um to bullying some some young Israelite teenager, right? Sorry, mate, I'm going to have to do a stop and search, all right, mate? Don't resist. Don't tense up now, right? They're coming with all that. But when it comes to, when it comes to real warfare, 
with somebody else that's going to bring the same amount of aggression as them and doesn't care about their badge, doesn't care about what so-called authority they've got back behind them. What are these police officers going to do in that day? They're going to be getting their ass whooped, man, by some carnal Edomites most, most of the time. It's going to be their own nation of people that are going to be doing it because people are not going to regard their kings nor princes. They ain't going to accept what the authorities of the police say anymore because they're going to write, well, I trusted in this society and look what it's got me. I trusted in this place and what did it get me? It got me nothing. So they're going to be carnal. They're going to go, they're going to have in their heart to do whatever they want to do. And again, that brother in his lesson was saying that a lot of people, and it's very true what he said, man. It, like, and it was the brother, um, the, the Israelite brother from Great Millstone in the London camp, Rakaya Kwam, which a lot of brothers that are part of, that believe that they're Israelites would know who that is anyway, right? But what he said is, um, so lucky, what did he say, man? He said, yeah, he said a lot of the reason why people don't commit crimes is because of fear of judgment, right? Because of fear of going to jail, fear of this and fear of that. And that's true. Fear is what makes people not do things. And that was even within, even within our law. Like the reason, the punishment for bearing false witness was that you were supposed to um, get the same judgment what you thought that the person that you were falsely accused was supposed to receive. And then that was supposed to make everyone fear and cast out the evil from among you. The same thing with like not making women be, be whores. It was supposed to take away the whoredom from out of your people. Right? Let me carry on reading. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. And what I'm going I'm to I'm tell, a, tell a little quick story again of what I sometimes mention every now and again. And what it is, right, is that during the time of the, um, during the, time of the lockdowns, right, the, uh, not not the lockdown during the time of the little um UK riots or whatever that happened over here in the Midlands and it happened over in the UK like in London and stuff like that right I, I remember seeing during that time I remember seeing and I wasn't writing I just want to put that out there I wasn't writing but I wanted to see what that kind of thing looked like man I wanted to see how my mind would react in in a situation like that and that was like more than 10 plus years ago back then right but I wanted to see what that kind of thing looked like I didn't believe that back then I was stupid. I didn't believe that people was going to do anything. I was like, nah, people ain't going to do nothing. But I still was like, let me go and see if people do anything. So I went, like after I was already somewhere else, I'd came out of a gym somewhere and I was already with, with a few of my friends or whatever. And we was like, let's see. And we went, right? I don't talk to none of them people no more or whatever, but that's not the point of the story. But we went there and then we saw, the first thing we saw was that like, a group of five guys man right a group of five guys they ran up to a ran up to a red car that was stopped at the traffic lights and they tried to open it up man they, they, the one guy was grabbing at the handle pulling at the handle trying to open it up right and then the guy was still parked there because he was he, he would kind of stumped for what was happening and then the one guy who looked like an edomite he jumped on top of the car right he jumped on top of the car and tried to um and was like stomping and stomping on the car, man. And then the guy driving in the car, the guy that was in the car just sped off and drove off. And then the guy fell on his back and got up and tried to run after the car, right? But what would I, I always still now, even to this day, I think what would he have did if he would have opened that car, put that car door up when he had tried to open it? Man? What would he have did? What was he? What was his intentions in his mind to do? And is if that guy in in, in prison or whatever, and and he's still on that kind of belief and he's still moving like that. He's still got that kind of things in his heart to do, that guy. So if he's still alive or whatever, because it's been 10 years since then, if he's still alive and he's still around, that same guy that tried to do that now, if he's still like that, he's going to still try and do that stuff again when chaos breaks. And there's many people like him, right? But the thing is, loads of people are going to be like this in that time because he was like that because he was just trying to grab himself some luxury things. He was just trying to have some fun thinking, oh, let me beat this guy up or whatever and drive his car and go for a joyride or whatever he was planning to do, right? But in the time to come, everyone's going to be acting like that because of necessity, because there's going to be no food, and I'm going to read it. Verse 17 again, Second Acts chapter 15 and verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation, so it's going to be mad out here, man, because there's going to be a lack of bread. 
And when somebody finds out that somebody has bread, well, then they're going to do something to them. Now, another thing that the brother mentioned as well was that he said that um, in places like London, and it happens pretty much all over the UK, to be fair, right? I've noticed that that's a common thing, a common trend in the UK, right? Where you'll have a poor neighbourhood, right? A rough neighbourhood that's got the like hoodlums in there. And then very close by, within walking distance, you'll have the nice neighbourhood, right? And that that's happens over here in the Midlands too, right? In areas like your um, Sully Hull and stuff like that. You'll have an area that's, you'll have an area that's like very nice and the people are like paying their mortgages and all of that, right? They're sitting at the coffee shop talking about what, what, who's throwing a birthday party or whatever. And then you'll have the other side within walking distance where somebody's just being robbed at knife point, right? And he was saying that when eventually these Israelites are going to stop fighting against each other and they're going to be like, they're going to turn their attention to their neighbourhoods that have got, have got the money. They're going to be like, what are we doing fighting each other here when these people over there have obviously got some stuff because I ain't even seen them come out of their house. And that's another thing that I saw in the um, lockdown. I saw that, the, I mean, in the riot thing, like I, I was looking on social media back then, on Facebook or whatever, and I was noticing that a lot of these Edomites, their hatred was coming out. They was like just saying, oh, these blacks, rah, 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 talking all that shit, right? You know how Esau thinks. And then people, people that was... People that was normally like on that love love Esau spirit was was saying, man, fuck that. Why are you trying to just pull it on us? Pull it on us. Pull it on us. You, you, I saw your people out there too. I saw your people out there too. You got anything to say about that? So when these times get hectic, everyone's going to turn back to their own people, man. Let me read it again. Verse 15. For the sword and the destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands, so you're going to have Ish Ishmaelites against Elamites, right? Ishmaelites against Edomites, Edomites against Moab, Moab against Ammon, Moab and Ammon against Esau, right? In some situations, you might have um, Ishmael and Ishmael and Esau against Israel, right? Against the Israelites, against Jake. You're going to have Jake against Esau. Obviously, we already know that one's going to happen, right? We already know that's going to happen. We're going to have, um, we're going to have, White Jakes against Edom, straight up Edomites. You're going to have White Jakes against Tares, right? You're going to have White Jakes and normal natural template looking Israelites, right? <laughs> normal naturally template looking Israelites, you know? No, normal template Israelite, Wesley Snipes type, you know what I mean? The archetype Israelite going in on Esau, man, right? Or you're going to have, you're going to have um, Jakes, like the, the template Jake, Wesley Snipes, Right, <laughs> with a um, with a with a with a confusion of face, Jake beating up some tears, man. You're gonna have all sorts of stuff going on out here. It's gonna be mad, man. Now, already right now, we can see that people are not people are not on on like that same same vibe. What happened with that woman that was getting her hair pulled in on the train the other day? The guy said the guy shouted at her to get up. He was in like a, a hooded crop top. And some and some leggings, right? Nobody was nobody wanted to do wanted any parts of trying to fight that guy, because I was like, man, forget this woman. They didn't care. They didn't give a crap about her, man. They didn't care. They didn't care. And the brother also said, which I thought was another good point. He said, um, what did he say, man? He said, uh, that a lot of men are going to be hearing women or hearing people close by getting attacked, and they're not going to step in to save them, even though want right now they think that they're brave, man. They think that they're brave. They think that they're like a warrior right now. But in that time, they're not going to step in. They're not going to care, man. They're going to they're gonna be about themselves and themselves only. Matthew chapter 24 <clears throat> and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So once people are like, man, it's hard out here. They ain't going to be on no lovey-dovey stuff. And one thing that somebody told me during the lockdown, now that I've just said that, I remember somebody told me during the lockdown that... um. They said that like over 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 in Birmingham, which that's not where I am. I'm in I'm somewhere in the Midlands though. But over in Birmingham, people was um like running into people's houses and stealing, man. Like people people was running into these Ishmaelites' houses and stealing because they knew that the Ishmaelites was 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 about to celebrate um their their feast of Ramadan. So they knew that they had a lot a, a large portion of food stored up because they understood that they store up food for that time, man. But the same thing's going to happen when people find out that people have stored up food anyway. 
And at first, people are going to choose easy targets like, oh, um, Betty, that what that that lives by herself, the single mom with her two pretty daughters or three pretty daughters or a little daughter, the single mom with her little son, that's that still uses a dummy. You know what I mean? The the one man that's kind of like he might be skinny or whatever, small, or and people think he can't do nothing. And in some situations like that, they'll be right, he can't do nothing. And in some situations, they're going to get the surprise of a lifetime, man, because that guy was waiting on them before they ever even knew. You're going to have people like Carl from The Walking Dead that are going to stir up. And then for what people don't know about Carl from The Walking Dead is that he became like a real, like a real carnal demon, man. Right? He was a real Edomite on that show, The Walking Dead, man. He went, when he when he jumped in the back of um, Negan's truck, followed them back to a... Uh, Followed them back to the the sanctuary that they called what they called their headquarters, and he just started blazing out, blazing them off with his assault rifle as soon as he got there, man. You're gonna have people like that that are gonna rise up. In some cases, right, there's gonna be some women that are gonna do things for a time, but eventually it's gonna get too hard for them, man. It's not gonna be a oh I had one fight and then now I'm just saved. You're gonna have to continually fight to have things. If you've got bun- abundance, you're gonna have to continually keep fighting. To protect that abundance in that time, man. It's not going to be like, oh, uh, okay, after I beat, beat somebody at one time that tries me, then now I've shown everyone what I'm working with and no one's ever going to try nothing again. Nah, people are going to be hungry, right? People are going to be hungry. And when someone's hungry, they don't view, a, a man that's six foot five don't look like he's six foot five anymore when people are hungry, right? In fact, if people get hungry enough, that man that looks like six foot five He's going to look like food in a literal sense to some of these people, man. Because because teams of cannibals are going to rise up. That's going to happen, man. This time that's getting ready to be on the earth is going to be the worst time that anyone's ever seen in their lifetime, man. And when I was hearing that brother talking in that lesson, like he was he was going in, man. Like he was really explaining and going in on how horrible this thing is going to be, man. To where men are going to be like lamented, the people that the people that are alive right now around your particular area, whatever, the day is going to come where they're not going to be. A lot of them are not going to be, man. And that's why we have to turn to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, because that's the only way that we're going to be able to get protected from these things. I don't care who you are, how tough you are, how strong you think you are. Like you're in the gym, on the treadmill, <laughs> for fucking running 10, 10 miles, ten miles. And you're timing it and you're getting better. You're shaving off 20 seconds each time. You're hitting the bench press. Six plates, seven plates, right? You've got a whole bunch of power. You can kick a you can kick a baseball bat and break it with your leg. Well, in that time, all that stuff's not going to be like that, man. That's not going to matter, man. A lot of these people that train and do all that stuff and get real strong, they're preparing for a one-on-one. But when people are trying to go all the way with things, they're trying to do it in the easiest way possible. So what's the way that this person is going to give the least amount of resistance? If we go 20 on one, okay, we'll go 20 on one then. You ain't going to be so tough. Amos chapter 5 verse 18, Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh, to what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. And a lot of these Christians, when I got to get on these Christians, you know I got to say something about them. Because a lot of these Christians think in their mind that they're just going to get rapture the rapture, they're going to get rapture, raptured up into the heavens, right? And they're going to escape and they're just not going to see no evil, even though their stupid ass has seen evil already right now. Here it is, they've already seen a whole bunch of chaos going on in the world, but they're thinking in their mind that they're not going to see nothing. They think that they're just going to get beamed up, right? And then the earth's been cast away after that. That's what they think. But that's not what's going to happen, man. They're stupid as he's going to be down here. And it's, they're still going to be down here when the actual so-called rapture, as they kind of call it, which ain't no rapture what they're talking about, man. Right? It's the Israelites of the elect getting beamed up out of this world, being protected from the wrath that's going to come from the nukes, man, from the destruction. Amos chapter 5, verse 18 again. Warn to you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and had leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? And it is going to be darkness and not light, man. It's going to be a real horrible time, man. 
people that are disabled or whatever and they can't walk, people are just going to come into their house and be like, man, what what food they got in here? The person the person's going to be there stranded on the side and they'll just be like, if there's no food, they might eat the, eat the disabled person, right? It's going to be completely disgusting and vile. What's going to happen, man? And this this type of evil acts that are going on in the world is what's going to cause a lot of people to seek safety, right, from Esau, which that safety is going to come with you have to take this, uh, you have to come to our FEMA camp and we have to book you, in through the, book you in through the system. And the booking in through the system is going to be something that's going to be done either in here or in your hand, right? And you're going to be booked into the system and then they still might not feed you anyway. But they were like, now you're mine. And then you're still going to get destroyed anyway. Because the Lord ain't rocking with none of that. So any Israelite that get any Negro, Latino, or Native American, any Israelite that gets that, we done. And that's why, we, again, we have to trust in Yahweh, man. Now, let me get another scripture because the scriptures say, and in those times, be as pilgrims on the earth. So let's go into that. Because man, the scriptures say man's going to have the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So it's not necessarily for us to be trying to really think about 25 different scenarios that we're going to be able to escape from, man. We have to just put our faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahushai and he'll do the rest. He'll guide us and make us do the spiritual the spiritual um, decision in every single situation that we're in. So if it's a situation that we might not be able to do anything physically, he'll cause for us to act spiritually and use our words to get out of that but then there might be a situation that requires us to actually physically do something and it'll cause us to do that too now let me carry on reading this it says this is second chapter 16 second chapter 16 and verse 37 behold the plagues draw nigh and are not slack as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son with two or three hours of her bring of her birth great pains can pass her womb which pains when the child come forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. And the world shall mourn and the sorrow shall come upon it on every side. So things are getting ready to be taking place, man. And people are already experiencing some of the plagues because even famine is a plague according to the scriptures, man. Famine's a plague. Death's a plague. Pestilence is a plague. Haven't pe loads of people died from a particular thing that's been pushed on the earth? Isn't there a new thing that, that that's that's going around? Isn't there a new thing that people are getting? Verse 40. Oh, my people, hear my word and make you ready to die battle. And in those days, be even. And in those day, and in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth as one that will lose. So if you're, if you're a brother that's tried to do stock market or whatever, you tried to buy some stocks, right? You've tried to buy a car. You've got a car and finance or whatever. Well, in that time, none of that stuff's going to mean shit, man. If you're, if you're a guy that you got a football, you, you're good at football or sports, and you got, like, you know what I mean? Anything that people have got, they're going to have to cast that away, man. you got a company. That's going to have to be cast away. Anything is going to have to be cast away in that time. Be, the, even though you might have that stuff now and you do these things, there might be brothers that do crypto. There might be brothers that do stocks. There might be brothers that have a very good job that pays them a good amount of money and they're able to manipulate and manoeuvre. Well, they're not going to be able to be able to worry about that job in that time. They're not going to be able to worry about those assets that they used for whatever purpose to keep being able to push the truth in that time. Because now it's going to be the time of, well, we have to reject these things because cleaving onto those things too much is going to make you get destroyed. Let me carry on reading. Verse 40. Oh, my people, hear my word and make you ready to thy battle. And in those, be and in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. And he that occupieth merchandise, as he that will not profit by it. So even though you might do these things, be as those that ain't going to profit by it. Consider it a loss. Take the L. Right? And he that buildeth, and he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, as, as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather grapes. They that marry, as they that shall get no children. And they that marry not, as the widowers. And, there, and therefore they that labour, labour in vain. Right, and there's even another scripture in the book of Haggai that says, um, you know what, let me get it. Let 
and we get it, man. Because in like all of these riches that brothers are trying to, well, well, I ain't gonna say brothers are doing it, but all these riches that the world's trying to do, trying to gather, that's gonna be going to somebody else anyway. So, crush my page. So lucky. Man. Haggai. Yeah, this is Haggai chapter one and verse three. Then came the word of Haggai. The, then came the word by Haggai, the prophet, saying, "All oh, in the screen." Then came the, then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai, the prophet, saying, "Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts: Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you." But there is none warm, and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. So that means that you're earning the wages, but you're gonna lose it anyway. And isn't that what I read earlier in um second the 16 chapter? And it's happened once and it's gonna happen again. Verse 8: Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, say if you have us. And that was the past where there was we was rebuilding the temple. But right now. We're supposed to be building spiritually, man. We're supposed to be putting on the whole arm of Yahweh. As the scripture say in second, I mean in Ephesians the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse. We're supposed to be putting on the spiritual, the spiritual things now. Because that's what's going to protect us in that time. It's not going to be no combat sports skills. It's not going to be how much money we got, because that stuff, having like being a financial guru and all that, that's good for now. But it's not going to matter in the time to come. Because when everything when people are robbing things, what good's money? What good's money to buy? I oh, can. I've got two hundred fifty thousand to buy a Lambo, but some somebody else is gonna just go to the Lambo dealership with some weapons, with a group of their friends in a gang, beat up whoever works there, smash it up, rob the keys, and they're just gonna all take cars from out of there. So what good's money gonna be in that time? People aren't gonna care about money in that time, man. Verse nine: You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. Right? Laboured in vain. You looked for much. And lo, it came to little, and when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why say if Yahweh? Because ev why say if Yahweh of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man into his own house, and that's why Yahweh's causing this world to be destroyed right now, because his house lies waste. People are trying to make the the, the out. He Yahweh requires for the Israelites to pray to him and to give him reverence for the things that he gave to us, and the things that he wants to continue to give. The reason why he saved us out of Egypt was so that we could worship him, right? And I think I've, I think I've made a point, man. There's going to be purge type events, post-apocalyptic type events, right? There's a movie called Prepper on Amazon Prime. That's a good movie, right? There's all the purge movies, right? There's all the um, 28 Days Later, and I don't mean the zombie type stuff, but there's all of that. There's another, there's another, another zombie one called. Um, Black Summer, right? Which the zombies in that really just look like a hungry human to me, as far as I'm concerned. It don't really even look like a zombie, man. It looks like a a hungry human that's just like moving crazy out here, like can like a cannibal. That's what it looks like to me whenever I watch that. It's very good. Black Summer, it's called, and it's got two scenes or whatever, and that shows how the people are just going from one scary situation to another, man. And then the one person that you think is going to survive or make it. Because he might be strong or whatever. He ends up not making it. And then the people that you think ain't going to make it. They end up actually being able to move and maneuver. Because the spirit was dealing with them to survive. But the spirit wasn't dealing with them other people to survive. It was only dealing with them to continue for a time. And then end and stumble and fall. Right now. On that note I'm going to say shalom warm to the elect of the nation of Israel. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Makar Kodash. And shalom warm to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom warm.